Welcome back to Branchy Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. A 17-year-old driver was shot dead by a police officer during a traffic check in a northwestern Paris suburb on the morning of June 27th. According to the local prosecutor's office, the officer has been detained on suspicion of voluntary homicide amid an ongoing investigation into the incident. Lawyers for the victim's family identified him as Nahil M., a French citizen of Algerian descent who lived in the working class area of Nanturi. Widespread riots erupted in the streets of France following Nahil's death with at least five consecutive nights of violence. Angry protesters have clashed with riot police and more than 3,000 people have been arrested nationwide over the past week. On several nights, rioters erected barricades, threw fireworks at police, ransacked businesses, and set fires to thousands of cars and buildings. As a result, more than 40,000 law enforcement officers have been deployed across France to quell violence using tear gas, water cannons, and non-lethal dispersion grenades against rioters. The hottest day ever on Earth happened on July 3, 2023. The average global temperature reached 62.62 degrees Fahrenheit. The average global air temperature was recorded 2 meters above the Earth's surface with the data compiled by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the University of Maine. The previous record for the Earth's hottest day was set in July 2022 and in August 2016 when the global temperature reached 62.46 degrees. The rise in global temperatures is likely due to recent heat waves in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. Global temperature data goes back to 1979, but researchers say these temperature readings are comparable with data that goes back much further. They are confident this is the highest global temperature since instrumental measurement began around the 1850s. Back in May, the masking mandate in hospitals was lifted and face coverings became optional. Now, about two months later, a cluster of COVID-19 cases at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston have popped up among staff members and patients. A spokesperson at the hospital said the facility detected a cluster of COVID cases that was isolated to those staff and patients and the hospital reinstated universal masking in the affected unit. Beth Israel officials were vague in their reporting of the cases, but did confirm there were under 20 cases. The Massachusetts Department of Public Health later clarified that 12 staff members and 7 patients were infected, with no critical illness reported and none being transferred to the ICU. While the state isn't reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On June 29th, newly released metrics show that over 18,000 molecular tests were conducted and 642 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of June 24th, 40 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 11 are in the ICU. 10 deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more after the break steps to keep yourself and your family safe from ticks and the illnesses they can cause. Use EPA approved tick repellents on your skin and clothes. Read and follow the directions. Wear light colored clothing to make it easier to spot a crawling tick. Check for ticks on yourself, your kids, and your pets anytime you've been outdoors. Some tick bites can make you sick, but finding and removing a tick properly makes it less likely. Call your doctor if you start to feel ill or notice a rash near the bite. Play it safe when you're outdoors. Welcome back. Historical reenactors, elected officials, and first responders were among dozens of groups to march in Braintree's Patriotic Parade last Saturday. The parade marched through Braintree from the Registry of Motor Vehicles to the Hollis School as the town celebrated the 50th anniversary of Braintree Day. 
The 80 plus parade units included bands, antique cars, superheroes, and elected officials. Other events the day included food vendors, a maker's market, a petting zoo, and inflatable obstacle courses. Entertainment included guitarist Ryan Faraday, and the featured act was the rock band Boathouse Row. The 50th celebration was capped off with fireworks sponsored by the Braintree Electric Light Department. Longtime event organizer Sean Powers said in a statement, quote, It was one of the best fireworks displays south of Boston, end quote. Braintree Town officials announced the return of two beloved summer events for 2023. Party in the Park and Summer Movie Nights. For Party in the Park, the events are free of charge and take place from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on July 11th and July 19th. Food will be provided and entertainment is also on the agenda for the events. In the event of inclement weather, parties will be held the following evening. Summer Movie Nights takes place at French's Common next to Braintree Town Hall. The movies are free of charge and include pre-movie entertainment beginning at 6 p.m. on July 13th and July 20th, with the movie beginning at dusk. Residents are invited to bring blankets and chairs. buck buy concessions will also be available. In the event of inclement weather, there will be no pre-movie entertainment and the movie will be shown in the Town Hall Auditorium at 8 p.m. Braintree Police Chief Mark Dubois is now heading to a new position in Maine before the end of the summer. The Portland, Maine City Council unanimously approved Dubois as the next police chief. Dubois has been the chief in Braintree since 2019 and previously served as chief in Maynard. For seven years, Portland City Manager Danielle West said, quote, I'm excited to have Mark join the Portland Police Department and our city leadership team. Mark has demonstrated a commitment to instilling trust, spurring collaboration, and communicating and working with diverse communities, end quote. Police are still seeking a suspect after two teenagers were shot and killed in Braintree on June 25th. No suspect has been pr publicly identified after Jazier Porter, a 16-year-old Braintree High School student, and Jaden Santos Andrade, 19, of Dorchester, died in the shooting. Officers responded to multiple 911 calls of shots fired around 1.30 a.m. in the area of Alfred Road. According to police, officers found the victims as well as a third person who was not injured in a parked vehicle. Police officials say both of the teens who were struck died at the hospital. Authorities are investigating the incident as a double, double homicide and have assigned extra law enforcement units to the area near the scene, but officers do not believe there is an ongoing threat to public safety. As of July 1st, those looking to recycle mattresses or box springs are now required to call Capital Waste before pickup. Due to post-COVID safety and new state disposal requirements, residents must bag the mattress they are throwing away. Bagging is to ensure more sanitary handling and protecting mattresses from foul weather issues. Braintree residents are entitled to a discounted bag of $5 per bag, and bags are available in queen and king sizes. For those hoping to purchase a mattress sanitary bag, you can buy them at the Braintree Town Hall Treasurer's Office, Water and Sewer Offices, 85 Quincy Ave, and Richmond Hardware. Always check with the store you purchased your mattresses and appliances from for free disposal options. For any questions about mattress recycling, head to braintreema.gov slash recycling. As of June 27th, the Nelson Chin Summer Concert Series at Sunset Lake are back for its 2023 season. The concert series are sponsored by Mayor Charles Gacoris and the Braintree Electric Light Department. Every Tuesday until August 8th, a new band will be featured at the gazebo on Sunset Lake starting at 6 p.m. Curra's Fancy and Studio 2 already took the stage at the gazebo, but no worries, this upcoming Wednesday, July 11th, you can catch Gainesville Road performing country, pop, and indie hits. BCAM TV will be covering the Nelson Chin Summer Concert Series, so just tune in to our public channels, Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28, or catch it all on youtube.com slash TV. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Hi, I'm State Representative Bruce Ayers, and I'd like to introduce you to the Helping Hand Program. 
With rising health care costs, all too often we hear stories about our seniors, veterans and neighbors who may not have the proper insurance coverage they need for durable medical equipment. These individuals may be living on a fixed income and may not have the financial resources necessary to cover the cost of the equipment they need. We have a solution. The Helping Hand program provides free, durable medical equipment to residents in need. Items such as wheelchairs, walkers, crutches, canes, commodes, tub seats, and hospital beds are available through the program. We receive donations of lightly used equipment and store them at our facility in North Quincy. If you're in need of any of these items, you can pick them up free of charge and return them after any length of time. My scooter has improved my mobility and independence. Thanks to Helping Hand, I can go to the store, visit the boardwalk, and do so much more. Helping Hand is a great resource for people who don't have insurance coverage. The Helping Hand program is successful, thanks to the generosity of people who have donated durable medical equipment to our inventory. For more information about the program, or to fill out an equipment request form, visit our website or call 617-472-9877. If you know someone in need of these items, we're always available to lend a helping hand. Welcome back to Brand New Today. Now let's get right into more stories. On Saturday, a controversial Massachusetts law took effect making driver's licenses available to undocumented immigrants. The legislation allows Massachusetts residents, regardless of legal status, to acquire a standard driver's license starting July 1, 2023. Former Governor Charlie Baker vetoed the legislation in May 2022, saying he couldn't sign the legislation because it required the RMV to issue state credentials without the ability to verify their identity. However, the Massachusetts House of Representatives voted to override the governor's veto, and the state Senate followed suit with a vote to override. The legislation essentially requires any resident of the state without legal status in the United States seeking a driver's license to provide the registry of motor vehicles with either a valid, unexpired foreign passport or a valid, unexpired consular identification document, plus one of other, five other documents. The Registry of Motor Vehicles estimates that 105,000 additional people will be applying for a license within the next six months. To accommodate this, they are temporarily increasing call center and customer service staffing by 50% and expanding RMV hours. The Sumner Tunnel closing is here. As of July 5th, the tunnel will be closed for two months for repair and restoration lasting through August 31st. The closure is setting the stage for some very frustrating traffic jams in the coming weeks. State transportation officials are asking travelers to consider commuting, to consider commuting alternatives. MassDOT Highway Administra Administrator Jonathan Gulliver said this week during a news conference, quote, We really need the public's help to get as many vehicles off the road as possible, end quote. The state and MBTA are even offering a number of discounts to encourage travelers to use transit and other alternatives to driving. For more information on commuting alternatives and discounts, visit MBTA.com. According to Boston Police, five people were injured after a shooting on Edgewater Drive in Mattapan around 2 a.m. on Wednesday, July 5th. None of the injuries are life-threatening, but two people have been arrested in connection to the incident. Two guns have also been recovered, but no, one, but no charges have been brought forth in the shootings. A new report from Stacker.com names a local, city in the second, a local city the second best beach town in the Bay State. Yes, Quincy made it to number two on the list just behind the town of Eastham. The rankings were based on factors including the number of beaches, the amount of shoreline, access to beach-related services, and median home values. Some Cape Cod fanatics may debate Quincy's second place honor, but the city's 27 miles of shoreline provide plenty of spots where beachgoers can enjoy the sun, sand, and won't have to drive down Route 3. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Attention! Attention! What's going on? It's summer reading time! Woohoo! 
Build it. Create it. Unleash it. Express it. Free it. Find your voice this summer at your library with reading programs for children, teens, and adults. Welcome back to Braintree Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations for you to watch. First in entertainment, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the fifth and final installment of the beloved film series. Finding himself in a new era, approaching retirement, Indy wrestles with fitting into a world that seems to have outgrown him. Before he knows it, Indiana Jones finds himself racing against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that can change the course of history. You can watch Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny now in theaters. Next in entertainment, Extraction 2 focuses on highly skilled commando Tyler Rake. Back from the brink of death, Rake embarks on another dangerous mission to save a ruthless gangster's imprisoned family. The film is directed by Joe Russo and stars Chris Hemsworth. You can watch Extraction 2 now only on Netflix. Finally in entertainment, Take Care of Maya focuses on an anguished couple in Florida who are battling authorities for custody of their ailing daughter after being accused of child, child abuse. This documentary covers the true story of Maya Kowalski while it also peels back the layers of Florida's child welfare system. You can watch Take Care of Maya now only on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.